All right, what's shaking, guys? It's Dancy here. We are joined today by uh, the other brothers, and I got a special guest popping in here, too. I didn't realize he was going to be on here, but I'm not going to tell him no, of course. He just flew in from Japan. We've got Nicholas Lawrence in there, too. What's up, boys? Hey, what's hey. going on, guys? All right, all right. Nice to see you. And, of course, Max is in there, too. He works with the other, bro other brothers, manages them, and takes care of a lot of the daily stuff. So it's nice to have Max with him, too. Good to have you here, Max. What's up, guys? All right, all right. So... Uh, today, I'm going to cut off the, the group there for a second because I can only squeeze you two guys in. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to talk about what we just saw, which is a collective thing from you guys. It's a Nicholas Lawrence uh, effect, but it's something that you guys produced as part of your new company. So let's kick things off right now. Let's talk about Titan, and then we'll get into the rest of the stuff you guys have been working on. Maybe a sneak peek at something too, huh? Yeah, let's, let's talk yeah. about that. We're super excited about it, and like the value of it alone is what we were super excited about because – I know uh, we try and price everything like to what it costs us to make and what what it is, and try to be very fair with that so we get the, in the most people's hands. So when we got a, when we were able to do a Nicholas Lawrence visual gimmick, hand built, durable, durable, strong, um, like yeah, with extra pieces, and we got to sell it for twenty bucks. Like we we're so happy about that. And so Nicholas can tell you more about like what Titan actually is. I know you guys just saw the trailer, but. He can give a little more detail in case you guys missed, or if you guys have any questions sure. specifically from the trailer, we can answer those right now as well. Totally. Yeah, that's uh, why we're here for sure, to uh, help the guys out there learn more about this. I've also got the Magic Cafe opened up as well. Um, one of the questions that popped up that I saw already that I think we should go ahead and get out of the way is, is this something that has been shown before? People are saying that maybe in a previous lecture that Nick Nicholas did that there was something like this shown. Um, can we kind of get into that first, and then we get into more of the yeah, second, so. uh, so I guess the only place you could have found this before was uh, in a previous uh, Penguin lecture. It was something I did with, uh, it was a trio. I did it with Brandon Wolf and Dalton Wayne, and we each taught a couple tricks. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one of them that I kind of taught briefly and just showed like, one of the applications. <clears throat> uh, but the reason I wanted to get this out there was because uh, you know we have the included gimmick plus materials, and also I kind of dove deep in uh, the, the creative process and, and really the potential in it. And uh, well, quite a few routines. Yeah, because there's so many things mm -hmm. you can actually do with this gimmick. It's really not a one-trick pony at all. Yeah. Um, so anybody can get creative, and you can also just do the routines that I included. So. Yeah, and we created a, like a super version of this as well um, yeah. that literally you had all the supplies for because we figured people were going to want to do this with their own decks. Yeah. So we included the, the supplies for the super gimmick, Titan, included, and it takes maybe about four minutes to create your own with your own deck of cards. And it's once you do that, it's so easy that I literally put it in the hands of my wife and she did it very first try and she even surprised herself by doing it. I'm like, look, hold the deck here and just flick the front and it just does it. And she was like, wait, what? <laughs> I should actually send you that video, Luke, you can post that. Oh, it was yeah, just her just being like, she goes, wait, what? <laughs> so it's super easy and we that's the value really is this, you might have been able to see it or but this way you don't have to make one. Um, you have the materials to make the better one and you have a bunch more routines and stuff as well. Absolutely. That was one of the really uh, nice things I saw was for the price. I can't believe this comes pre-made. That, that to me is one of the most, uh, you know, the, the nicest thing about it because a lot of times now you have to make this stuff yourself, mm -hmm. uh, which can be kind of tough. And also, as you were mentioning there, it's easy to do, but also the durability. This isn't one of those, I think you guys are calling this like a new style flap, right? Because it's not like what you're used to seeing at all. And it's also made the last at the end of the day. Yeah, it's totally different than a flap. Like, it's actually something completely new, and Nicholas can maybe touch on this more. But, yeah, it's completely different. It's just a way for people to understand and not just be like, oh, it's a flap card. Because everybody knows flap cards are kind of terrible. Yeah. For the most part, I'd say 90% of them are just not good. Yeah, um, they, and they they break really easy. They're only good for so many flaps before, like, the elastic, the what, whatever elastic portion breaks or yeah. – yeah, this is just, there's no elastic, it's built to last. Also, like, with a, with a flap card, you're very limited uh, to how you execute with the gimmick. Like, you have to just, like, wave your hand over it or whatever whatever it may be. There's a there's a choreography that's based around a flap that looks like a flap card. With Titan, it's like you can be aggressive. You can riffle the deck and be very natural. Uh, so it's kind of like a very unexpected visual, I think. It just feels good to do. It really yeah, does, do. and it's so easy. That's the best part. Of it is really is like <laughs> the ease of use of it. So yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had a chance to watch the instructional. I've seen it. Uh, it is very easy. Basically, like you guys were saying, if you can riffle a deck of cards, you can you can do this. Which is that's right. Yeah. If you can do this Bengali deck, you can do this. Trick. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I mean, one of the combos too for like the the uh, the workers out there too is like 
one of the great uses of this is mixing this with uh, double cross. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's like it's huge because like the thing, and I think anybody who performs double cross knows like you have to get that little secret saliva. I won't say for what, but you know, but you kind of eliminate that with this and kind of make it take it from like where they're not really expecting it, and you still get the reveal in their hand. But now you get to do it from the from the deck. You get to have the X drawn on the deck, and boop, and it vanishes. And now and it's they instant. Open it. It's not like here. Let me pick this ink off my flesh, and there we go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so now you have to give, you know uh, double cross, which mm-hmm. is amazing. We should, we all know like it's great reactions, but then you add this visual element, super impossible, and it really just amplifies it. And my favorite thing that you taught on there is the torn and restored. Like there, oh, there's yeah. so many crazy things that like. If, if you limit yourself to thinking about a flap card, then you're not thinking big enough for what this gimmick can do. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I was, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is something I want to make sure people understand. Is they see one of the main effects on there is the drawing. You know, you draw on the the card and the, the ink changes. You know, you can change it or uh, you know make it transpose somewhere else. Uh, but you can do a lot more with this than just what's actually on the card. Like you just said, you could do it with the torn or short card. Um, which looked great, by the way. I thought that was one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really see that one coming, to be honest with you. So um, that's one. Uh, I want to make sure I also uh, jump in and get any questions. Yeah. Uh, one of our friends here, Cameron Banks, I guess he was joining us because I was at Blackpool with you. Uh, is this something that you did show at Blackpool, Nicholas, or is this something that's that you were kind of holding back there? Uh, no, we didn't. More, so I'm not like, 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 a lecture, I think, right? No, did lecture. you teach in a lecture? Um, yeah, yeah, it was actually it really wasn't. So it was in the lecture, but not at the booth because we hadn't uh, produced it yet at that point. Okay. So we had just had the idea and we we're talking about it, and then uh, Nicholas lecture on it because again, it's such a great piece of magic that people ate it up at Black Boy. Not one got like the biggest applause of anything any of us did once they saw what it was. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, Black Boy was a good time, boys, and I know that uh, there was a lot of stuff going on over there, and. Uh, yeah, it was just—it almost felt like there was too much going on, you know. When we were. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually had funny enough, uh, not to plug somebody else's podcast here, but if you go listen to the Pith Pod, we go a whole in depth about our experience at Blackpool. So oh, cool. Nice. Go listen to that after this. <laughs> uh, look to see if there are any other questions. Also, have you guys been keeping an eye out? I don't know if you've seen any of the stuff going on over on the cafe. I know there's been a lot of uh, buzz, a lot of talk about this too. Uh, if you had any stuff over there, also, you know, I'll take some live questions, but I want to make sure you have a chance to answer anything you might have been kind of brewing on. Um, David wants to know what's the skill level, with the, and he asked because he's an older guy and he has arthritis. So I know we talked about briefly how easy it is, but just how easy is this and the skill level? Who's this for? Yeah, the skill level is, I would say, if you use the gimmick that comes included, you don't even have to know how to use glue, and if you can riffle the deck, I know that that can be. Tough for arthritis, but I I think that maybe we can be safe by saying it's between easy and medium. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and if you make the really if you make the if you can do a little bit of arts and crafts and decide to make like the the crazy gimmick with your own deck, again it's super easy to make. But you need to understand how to use glue and an exacto knife, but not in a crazy way. Mm-hmm. Then you can really then anybody can do it. Like I said, I put it in my wife's hands. It's never easy as card. possible. Yeah, it's yeah. easy as possible. But the one that's included is uh, the one that actually Nicholas personally uses. He doesn't do the super easy version. It looks the same, but he just does the, the one that's included. And that's more easy to medium, really. Yeah. But if you can hold a deck like this and flick the front, it, then you can definitely make it happen. If you watch the video, that's all the moves that's happening. There's nothing secret happening mechanics-wise. Mm-hmm. Nicholas, in those videos, he's holding the deck. He's literally flicking the front like any of us would, that's and it, it just does it by itself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's not like anything – he's not he's not doing anything secret to make the visual happen. No, the, the, no, yeah, the yeah, no arms anything. under the deck or mm-hmm. anything. Cool. Weird. Yeah. yeah. We were at the Murphy's uh, office up in Sacramento when we were releasing this, and we were showing the sales team kind of how it works and how to use it. And uh, I forget who it was, but one of the uh, sales ladies, she, we were showing her how to use it. We're like, oh, so here's the move, and she did it. And then she looked down, and the little star that we had drawn on it disappeared, and it just blew. She blew her own mind with it because <laughs> <laughs> she realized it'd be that easy. So it's it is it is very it is very simple. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we've got a friend, Mark, that's just joining us. I know people are going to come and go. Uh, today we're talking, uh, at least in the beginning here, about Titan. Throwing that up on the screen here so everyone can see it. This is the brand new thing from Nicholas Lawrence uh, in conjunction with the other brothers in the brand new company, Abstract, Abstract excuse me, Effects, which we'll talk about in just a second, too. I wouldn't really call this a new style flap either. It's, it's beyond that because it's not based on the traditional methodology of the flap, even though it kind of does the same visuals. To me, it's like the best of both worlds, you know, because... You get the durability, you get the visuals, and you don't have to worry about this breaking down in real time. You just do it over and over and over again. 
not to yeah. mention it's super easy to do as well. So, yeah, this has a lot of a lot of pluses for sure. It's super cheap. Uh, That's our favorite part. <laughs> I totally forgot about the best part of all. Yeah, it's, it is super, super cheap. It is super cheap. Yeah. It just, I mean, really, it's great because the, the to give the shout out where it's deserved. So this isn't the full abstract effects team. We actually have a couple of dedicated gimmick builders mm-hmm. who, when we were showing how to make these, and we did the timer. Oh man, it's gonna be a long time to make. It's gonna be pretty hard. And one of our guys is like, "Nope, I got this," and cut down the time like by nigh like sixty percent mm-hmm. the time. And so we're like, wow. So he's cranking these out way faster than we ever imagined possible and allowed us to bring the price way down, which was super exciting for us. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. And, you know, again, it comes pre-made. That's the other thing I want to mention to the guys out there. This is also something that comes pre-made, so you don't have to worry about doing any arts or crafts. You can if you want to, if you want to customize it, but it's not necessary uh, at the end of the day. Uh, Daniel Ricks also popped in and says, abstract effects. I can't say that. Abstract. Uh, Wow, I recently had them send me a free download and started following. Yeah, you guys are up to some stuff. I I tiptoed around that a second ago, um, but you have some some brand new stuff, a brand new company, basically. And you know, we should talk a little bit about that too, because I know we're working very closely with you here at Murphy's uh, with a lot of these new releases. So, uh, talk a little bit about Abstract Effects. How did this all come together? Obviously, you're all a team now. How did the team come together in the first place? So, man, the team kind of like. So here's here's kind of what happened. So. So me and uh, Daryl, Daryl and I, we're sitting down producing a trick for a company, a different company, mm-hmm. not working. But we're sitting there, it's one of our own tricks, and we're getting paid as gimmick builders to make the trick, right? And and we, ma- we make the joke, we're like, look at all these gimmicks, you know, this is like, this is crazy, like this amount of stuff. And, and yeah, Max this goes, is worth a lot of this money. This is worth a lot, like this bag's worth like a lot of money, right, of these, of these gimmicks. And Max comes, he's hanging out that day because we're just friends. We actually run another company together, but he's hanging out. And he goes, well, how much are you making of that? And we tell him, and as artists, you guys know that sometimes it's, and, and, it, and it makes sense why not, right? Because the other companies producing and manufacturing, paying for the advertising, we get that completely. Yep. But Max says, look, if you guys could save up a little bit of money, put some capital into this, you guys could produce your own effects. And Max said, I could help you do that because we're not business people at all, Daryl and I. Zero mm. percent business people. Like, like we don't answer emails. Like this Skype thing would never happen if it wasn't for Max. <laughs> like, like we did, like we're so bad with that stuff. So Max is like, okay, I'm going to manage you guys. So that's how Max came involved. And then Nicholas, we met him in Ohio and he's literally our favorite magician. And ever. All, the, all the time that this is happening on our side, he's been like doing, uh, He's been doing amazing visual magic. Like that's what you guys know him for. Oh my god! Like he's put out numerous effects, and he's doing his own thing at the same time we're doing exactly. our own thing. Own thing. Gotcha. And then he ends up moving out to Vegas, January first. Gets on a flight, comes out. I told him to stay with me, and so he's living here now. We're starting this new company with us three. Nicholas is a G, so he's like creating all this crazy <laughs> stuff we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And we're like, this stuff's insane. And Nicholas is even smarter than we thought he was. Like, we already thought he was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> He ends up even being better. Genius. So we're like, all right, well, let's see if he'll willing to partner with us on this new company. And so he said, yeah, and we felt like at that yeah. moment, yeah, heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so at that moment, we felt like we had a true team to be able to be a magic company that's going to produce and sell our products to the quality that we want to do. And we're so happy because on this couch, we have like every skill set that we could imagine that we would need. And not everybody's good at everything, but on this couch, we can conquer pretty much anything that we want to set out to. Yeah, yeah, so with consulting and releasing products and all that, now we sat down and we came up with the name Abstract Effects. Somehow we got abstracteffects.com. I don't know how we got <laughs> that, but we did. <laughs> and so so that's it. And now we're a company just doing what we can. And mm-hmm. and a really cool thing about what we're doing, too, and, and we just, you know, we're still kind of in our soft launch phase. Uh, Magic Live is going to be really the big, uh, big reveal of everything that we're working on, but... Uh, one of the cool things that we've gotten to do and, and that you'll see here in the next few months is that we're actually partnering with other creators to put out products. So it's not just going to be Other Brothers products, and Nicholas Lawrence products. Um, we're partnering with other creators uh, that we've met along the way um, and producing some of their products and um, developing some of their methods to really get some cool stuff out there. So uh, you guys will be seeing some really cool stuff from names that you're familiar with um, and maybe some uh, names that uh, aren't familiar to you, um, some new guys that are just really talented that uh, we're really uh, excited. I to cannot wait, with. Luke. I cannot wait for you to be blown away by this. Oh, These man. collaborations, yeah, coming. Huh? yeah. yeah they're, they're really. There's amazing. one trick yeah. in particular that I know you're gonna love. We'll have to talk uh, right. later. Well, we can even look. Okay, I, I, I love. I was, so I'm, I'm terrible with keeping secrets, <laughs> so I'm gonna give one name of a collaboration we have upcoming oh. that we're so excited about that we never thought we would have gotten, but we got it. 
and that's uh, Patrick Kuhn. Oh, wow. Nice. So we got a huge release coming with Patrick, and we are so excited about that collaboration. Nice. Any uh, any any timeline? I know you're giving me a little bit there, but I'm asking for a little bit more. Any any timelines? Yeah. So okay. So we'll give you um, our timeline. So Midnight Breakfast is next, which we can go into more detail about. Sure. Because that one's be ready in the next couple weeks. So Midnight Breakfast is our next one. That's going to be another brother's release. And then we've got an amazing trick that is going to um, uh, I think fill kind of a space in the market that hasn't been filled yet by a great creator named uh, David Mad Dog Jamber. Um, this is going to be his first release, and um, and yeah, so we're making Mad Dog stick. I don't know if he likes it that much, but we're going to put it on the packaging. <laughs> um, so we got that trick, which which we can't talk about yet. That one we're keeping a little under wraps. But this is his first release, and it's one of those creators who like nobody's ever heard of, really. And but after this, you will be. You'll be yeah. He will be fans of this guy for sure. And then right after that, we've got the Patrick Coon thing. Nice. So figure all that before Magic Live, hopefully. Yeah. Oof, man, that's yeah. You're squeezing a lot in there, huh? Wow. <laughs> we keep busy. We keep busy right. over here. All, all right. right, cool. Um, also, a reminder to the guys watching: uh, you can also ask questions not only about Titan, but any of the other things that the guys have put out. None of no more about the stuff they're teasing us on, obviously, but uh, the stuff that you guys have already, which. I was going to go through a couple of those too uh, and, and mention them. Um, you know, one of my favorites from you guys, of course, there's there's a lot to choose from here. I was going to show them here. Uh, Bear, you know, Bear is one of those things I think that really took the magic world by storm because it took a classic of magic and it really took it and flipped it on its head and made it even better, which is not something that's easy to do. And I'm showing the picture here too, guys, of the, uh, it's all it is. It's a, it's a Sharpie marker, you know, I'm showing the, the picture that it is, it says hi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what Bear is, and, and yeah, that's been probably our best-selling trick that we've ever put out, because I think it really resonated with people in the way that you're saying, is like, people really just loved it, they, they, um, they saw what it was, we didn't hide what it was in the trailer, we told people exactly what it was, so if you want to know what Bear is and the method, go to the trailer and we tell the method, because we believed in the trick so much, we mm -hmm. just straight up said the method. And so um, that's great, because people can imagine, like, I know how I can use this. And so many people have been like writing to us with things that we didn't even teach, with things that they came up with that turned this utility gimmick into like a show stopping amazing thing. Like I, I will always come back to this one because this is my favorite. Our buddy Joe Diamond used this with a, a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. And oh man, like, yeah, we don't do, we didn't teach anything about Ouija board. We don't do any Ouija board magic. But when you think about the applications of like making a salt ring and how this thing makes salt stick and do all that stuff that it does, like there's some really freaky stuff that you can do. And I I love hearing what you guys come up with with the tricks that we put out. The uh, the other reason I was showing the, the sharpie, which is I'm gonna throw this on the screen one more time, is because you can just take that, pop it in your pocket. That's all you have to carry. And you're yeah. ready to do this pretty much whenever yep. you want to do it. So yeah, I mean we're actually coming out with another little secret. So this is through Van Jing still because um, they produced that one, which they did an amazing job producing it. Mm. So we handed this one back off to them, and we're coming out with in the near future um, Bear Mini, which is going <laughs> to be a keychain version. So same thing, same amount of ink as the Bear. And anybody who owns a Bear knows that these never run out of ink ever. No. Like no, not one person has ever been like, oh my Sharpie dried out. Never. And it's been out for like three years, which is great. So now we're coming out with a keychain version that's going to be actually a, a cheaper, better value and be able to hook onto their keychain. But it holds the same amount of ink. But it holds the same amount Amazing. of ink and stuff. So that's cool. And yeah, so now you know all you have to do is carry your keys with you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just throw it on the keychain and rock and roll. <laughs> that's great. Uh, it was a question. I don't know if this can be easy to answer. And I'd love to ask Nicholas as well, actually. Uh, Mark wants to know, out of the tricks you put out, with the exception of the latest trick, obviously, which one is your favorite? Do you guys and Nick, do you guys have a, do you have a favorite that you've put out? I know that's a tough one. Yeah, well, I got it. My favorite is Uno, which is a download we put out with Vanishing Inc. And it's like a deck of cards chair test. That is and always... Well, maybe not always will because we got some cool ones coming, but that is definitely my favorite so far. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I would say uh, I put out a uh, folded color changing card. It was called Evolve. Yeah. That was probably my favorite, uh, and mainly because it's it's, uh, it's it's changed a lot over the months, over the years. Uh, we're, working, yeah, evolve. we're working on a new one, which is called Revolve, uh, and it's like the ultimate version of that. I guess just because it's it's so clean and visual. 
That's got to be my yeah. all-time favorite. Sweet. I mean, that's what you'll kind of be seeing from Abstract Effects, too. Uh, not a lot, but you'll see it sprinkled throughout, is that as creators going through an outside party to create your invention, sometimes things didn't end up the way that you imagined they would be as the creator, right? So now that we have full control over the whole thing, we can say, like, let's revisit this trick from 10 years ago or five <laughs> years ago, and let's make it the way that the creator always envisioned it, sure. you know? So we're excited about that. Um, my favorite is actually, funny enough, our worst selling trick of all time. And so we had a trick that came out that we sold literally none, almost like virtually none, and it's called a poker trick. Okay. And I think the trailer wasn't, we didn't do the trailer right. That was our first time trying to do a trailer ourselves. We didn't get the message across right. It's a cheap, again, like $20 trick that is just the self-working. To me, it's the best, my most favorite it's based off of a lot of great things that existed, but but made very concise. It's a poker trick hmm. that, that you don't self working. You don't have to do anything. The spectator is literally riffle shuffling and dealing. You don't do anything. You can predict the entire outcome. They're fooled. There's twists and turns along the way, and you literally do nothing. If you can cut a deck of cards once, that's all you have to do for this trick. And to me, <laughs> that just kind of encapsulates what we do: is like clever methods, making good magic, very powerful. But again, um, I don't think it conveyed, but that is my all-time favorite trick we've ever done is a poker trick. Okay. All right. What's your favorite? Uh, I, so obviously I have to promote my own trick, uh, but I, so I'd like to max switch your opener. That was a fun one to work on, but it's my favorite trick released, is the only so one I've released, years. so it can't be, yeah, so I can't pick that one, but um, no, you actually, can't. okay, that'll this be my favorite. favorite trick you that's, released. that's my favorite trick that I've released, because that's my only trick that I've I'm going to show it now as you talk, just so you know, so I'm going to be showing this. <laughs> yeah. This is a fun one. We got uh, Piff to join us on the trailer and, nope. and Matt King to join us on the trailer, which was kind of fun. Um, obviously, the other brothers were a big part of it. Um, but, yeah, so it was a you know, pencil to Sharpie change, uh, really visual uh, kind of fun thing. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing right now. We just got through the beginning with, with, uh, with Piff there. So here comes the boys. You start with a little golf-looking pencil, and it changes into the Sharpie. Yeah. There you go. Now, now, if anybody here watching this live has watched the explanation for Maxwell's signature opener, do not give away the secret. <laughs> not the secret of the trick, but the other secret. And if you watch the explanation, you know exactly what we're talking about. So don't give away that secret. And, Luke, you might have to go watch it after this the explanation. But there's a big secret, Yes. and we only told it on that explanation. So, mm -hmm. so if you saw it and you know, comment that you know, but don't tell anybody what it is. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. I have watched part of it. Obviously, I get access to a lot of things before other people do. And I watched the beginning. I got the, I got the gist of it, and I said, okay, I'm good. But obviously, I'm not yep. good. So, yeah. we got to watch about another three minutes yep. past the gist. <laughs> and then the, big, <laughs> then the hammer drops. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, with that one, the, just a stupid question. I know someone out there is going to want to know the answer to. With Maxwell's signature opener, Maxwell, can the pen write after you change the pencil into the pen, the Sharpie? Yeah, so that's a really fun thing. It's, uh, so it's an instant change, and then you uh, just hand the Sharpie out. It can write. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to – that's so why it's like a great opener. So you can go into, like, a signed card, signed bill, yeah. you know, signed – whatever. You can get into that kind of uh, routine. So – and we talk about how that all works and, you know, what you get with it. And, um, yeah, everything's all kind of self-contained, which which is pretty nice. So Yeah. And I guess the big question is, is there more from Maxwell? That's what everyone wants to know. More from oh, Maxwell. Max, <laughs> question Max mark. has an amazing trick coming out um, with uh, – yeah, those, the production on this was a little rough. So we've been working it out, but hopefully before the end of the year, you guys will see another Maxwell signature uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the Maxwell the signature, signature line. line. <laughs> it's the signature line. It's going to be his thing. So yeah. we got at least one more for Maxwell. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Mark wanted to know how much is that one? Do you off the top of your head, do you remember how much Maxwell Signature Opener resells for? I don't know. Thirty dollars. Thirty bucks, and it's all pre-made. You don't have to worry about anything, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We're ready to go. Um, the in, the instruction video is actually really helpful. We go through a lot of different um, methods, routines, um, ways that you can do it for Instagram as well as for uh, just a live mm -hmm. performance. Um, so it is, is great for, you know, quick little Instagram thing uh, as well. So, but yeah, it's all. Yeah. And if anybody wants to, uh, go see all the tricks we're talking about in one concise place, you can go to abstracteffects.com and that's where all of these tricks we're talking about are just laid out. So it's not like kind of polluted yet with like all of the magic releases It's just the, these ones we've been talking about with actually a couple that have not been released and will not be released through any other company, but abstract effects, there's actually a couple One's on there, actually. Looking at you, Grandpa Letter. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
I, I, I'll take a peek over there myself after we're yeah. wrapped up over here. Right. We actually we can actually talk about one of those if you want for a second, and and so yeah. It, yeah, so we have a trick called Grandpa Letter. Grandpa Letter. Okay. Then I think we all were being honest with ourselves. It would actually be our favorite trick we've ever released. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it's pretty great. So it's a um, a letter from your grandpa. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can pull out a deck of cards. Have somebody pick a card, put the card back. Give them the deck. Give them this letter from your grandpa. And then they read the instructions that your grandpa gave, and they basically perform a self-working card trick on themselves. That's cool. To find their card. And so now before they reveal their card, though, this is set up like a lucky coin trick, so if you know that, then you know exactly where we're going with this. If not, it's fine. Self-working card trick, they get down to one card. And then you tell them, say, my, my grandpa liked puzzles, so he left a message for you. So I want you to read the last line of every, the last letter of every line and read what it says. And they go in their mind, they're like, oh, it's going to reveal my card. But instead, when they actually spell out the last line, it just says send nudes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like, sorry, Grandpa was a pervert. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God. And then, then they read the first sure. letter of every line, and it actually spells out their card, mm-hmm. the Ten of Spades. And then they turn over the card on the table, and actually they did find their card, the Ten of Spades. That's hilarious. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's like a $10 trick that we were absolutely in love with. And it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. You know, magic doesn't always have to be so serious, right? So yeah, yeah, right. yeah. good thing. I appreciate that. Yeah. Good thing that we wouldn't be doing magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here is a more serious question. Since we're gonna kind of shift here, from Carlos, you know, a lot of people they look up to you guys um, because you are doing. Some, first of all, you're doing what you love, which is awesome. You know. Um, we're so thankful for that. Yeah. Which I do want to mention real quick to the guys out there that. The other brothers team sent over some goodies to the Murphy staff just to thank you uh, mm-hmm. for uh, for the relationship that we have and, and allowing them to do what they love to do. And so, yeah, that was a nice little gesture from you guys. I wanted to thank mention you guys. Thank you so much for us that we just appreciate it. We're just having fun out here. So yeah. we appreciate you guys and all the, the, the people and the, 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 the fans who watch these things and comment on these things and yeah. buy things from us. All that lets us do what we love. We're super blessed by that. Yeah. Uh, with that said, Carlos wants to know, and this is going to be something I'm sure you're used to hearing, but uh, doesn't get old, at least from one creator to another, it doesn't get old to hear. Uh, can you talk about creative process? And I know that's a very open-ended question. It's also a very big question. Uh, can you maybe briefly, maybe you guys as a group there, kind of go through what works for you? We don't spend too much time on it, but it is a very interesting question to hear from yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> One thing I kind of I feel like we've always kind of said, and also myself, is if you can think it, you can do it. And I guess that's kind of where it really all comes from, uh, is if you can visualize something, just visualize an idea. You know, like even if it's just something that's crazy, uh, you can work backward and kind of figure out something. It might not be exactly what you were imagining, um, but again, just using your imagination, thats it's a powerful tool. Uh, so between that and just the... the resources of reality, you're going to end up with something. Uh, so that's generally how I create and how kind of we, we create. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. And I think one of the best things, too, like as a jump-off point, if you're like struggling, and we sell this to everybody, if you are if you want to create real magic that has an impact on the community, the way you can do it is say, okay, I'm going to pick a genre or a specific plot, a specific part of the plot. So you look at uh, like Ashes on Arm, which is how Bear came about, right? We said, here's Ashes on Arm. That's a plot that exists. And we say, what would the perfect version look like? And then we make sure that the version we create is at least better than everything else that has come before it, right? Yes. In, in our minds, in, in one way or the other. So basically, if you are a creator and you want to create something, pick anything. Pick a plot. Pick ambitious card. Pick the sandwich effect. Pick uh, build a lemon. Pick anything and say, okay, what's missing from that? Look at everything that exists in that genre of you know, that plot and say, okay, they all have this, but none of them have this. How do I make mm-hmm. my version have that? And that's how you're not just creating magic for magic's sake, but you're actually bettering the magic, um, like whatever you call that pool of knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. So that way the people ahead of you now can look back at your thing and everybody else's thing and say, what's missing now? And you can keep going, keep going, and there's a betterment for all of magic, really, when you create magic that way. Absolutely. And my favorite note for like the creative process is to learn and get involved and love things other than magic. Like... If you, Martin Gardner, for example, he took something very boring, and he's a math, he was a mathematician, like, but, 
And but he was the master magician. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like so many amazing things that he created, and so many of them have a mathematics base. Yeah. Like, just think of what's the thing that you know more about than Joe Schmo on the street. Like, one of the things that I happen to know a lot about is playing banjo, and we produced a trick called Banjo Coin because I am familiar with playing banjo, and I was like, oh, look at this thing that not a lot of people come across, and I'm going to use this for a magic trick. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that, bringing in everyday things that mean something to you. Bring, mm-hmm. it, bring it into your uh, into your world of magic, too. And a second question I would actually love to know more about, guys, because this is something that I'm not so good at. I'm not the craftiest guy in the world, not going to lie. Um, Carlos wants to know here, what are the resources you recommend to get started building gimmicks? Are there any books, any resources? That's something I've never thought to ask people, but I would love to know from you guys because you are good. And I know you have a team now that makes stuff um, for you, but I know that in the beginning you guys had to kind of craft your own things. Um, what kind of resources would you recommend for people with that? Because that's not the easiest thing to pick up on. Corner rounder. <laughs> Three millimeter corner rounder. That's the, that's the best. That's the most useful tool we've ever found. <laughs> Uh, no, but the the thing is, there's a lot of like secrets to the trade, right? So, so maybe some. I think, hey man, that's a Nicholas Lawrence book right there, the, the how to of gimmick building. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Like gimmick building. Yeah. Maybe that maybe that's a future project, but it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, is is with that kind of stuff, is you if you have a specific need, so you say, here's the gimmick. What would I need? And you just imagine like, oh, I need a smaller magnet or I could use dental dam. So you look at other gimmicks that exist and what are they using? That's the big thing is as all magicians, we have a drawer full of magic that maybe wasn't what we thought it was or we don't like it that much or we stopped using it. But go through that, pick out everything they did to make those gimmicks and look at what they use. Did they use this weird little magnet? Did they use a piece of elastic somewhere? Did they use... Yeah, if you're not using that trick anymore, don't be afraid to break it apart and take the magnet out of it. Yeah, no. it. But... Um, like a good jump off point, you might have to help me with this, Luke, but Murphy sells the Paul Harris uh, creator pack or something. Yep, yep, yep. And exactly that, what that's talking. a great jump off point to have yeah. a yeah. lot oh, of the tools yeah. that you need totally. to get started. Yeah. But, but again, not a lot of creations come from like, oh, there's this cool new thing that exists. Let me make a gimmick around it. It's like you have a vision of a gimmick. And once you have that, then it's just finding the best way to make it. And then you can reach out to people like, oh, I've got this gimmick. What's missing? And someone can tell you, like, oh, you got to get the 10 millimeter by 0.4 millimeter magnets because those are the ones. Like, <laughs> like you can try to do it with these bigger ones. Like, it's so something you can tell you all these little niche secrets that you wouldn't know about when you have a specific gimmick build in mind. No, yeah. that's something I, I wish. 10 millimeter by 0.4. Yeah, 3 yeah. millimeter yeah. Around there. Like, <laughs> those are six we're giving away our business. <laughs> that's our whole book. It's just going to be a book. <laughs> That and supermagnetman.com, right? Yes. Oh, man. And KJ Magnetics. Oh, yeah, yeah. KJ. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, I just wish I was better at building stuff. I'm, I'm not that guy. I wish Dude, I was. I, Luke, I am with you. I suck so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I try and try and try. And I'm just not good at it, man. Yeah. So I feel you. Yeah. I know that uh, I know Nicholas is really good at that. And I, I, yeah. I guess oh, yeah. I'm guessing the other Daryl's good at it, too, because you didn't really say anything there, though, about not being good at it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good well, at it. Well, Daryl's really good, too, is he 3D prints. He's really good at, like, design, too. Oh, wow. So we, we're big, uh, what's really been great for us is that we've been able to print out our own prototypes of, of full units or just pieces of units um, that have helped us kind of jump off to, you know, custom manufacturing or whatever it is that we need. So Cool. And we just did a project where I had to do like so much circuits, 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 circuits. <laughs> That's a Martin Gardner boring nerd stuff. Sounds That's like you love that. <laughs> but accidentally went to school for that, so I'm, I'm the guy who does that. Uh, the tree and and the shirt explains a lot too. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, a, a couple other things I want to mention too as we go forward here is you know we've talked a lot about Titan obviously is the big anchor because it's the latest thing for the time being. Yeah. Uh, touch a little bit on Bear. Also, something recently you guys did with us. You popped out to California, you shot your second at the table lecture. So if you guys are interested in grabbing that, it's a download so you can get it for your favorite dealer today. Uh, those that are is super the best cheap. deal of magic that exists anywhere is those at the table lectures. Yeah, you can't get any magic trick for $10, let alone 5 10 20 depending on which lecture you're watching. Yeah, that's, amazing. that's true, man. There's uh, a lot of bang for your buck on those things for sure. Yeah. Um, also, another one of my favorites, and I'm going to show a little bit of the trailer in just a second. Snapped. Snapped was huge, man. That thing popped up, yeah. and people lost their minds, dude, when they started seeing that. So, uh, talk a little bit about Snapped. As I said, I'm going to throw to some of the trailer here as you're talking. So, uh, feel free to start chatting about Snapped. 
Yeah, so Snap was great for us. We were this was our very first release after Max came on board and said, "Let's do a trick. Let's try and get a big name on it." It was like, "Oh, we created this thing for Justin Flom. He did this commercial. Justin Flom is an amazing dude." So he said, "Let's do it. Let's jump off your company, right?" Mm-hmm. And that was like a little gift of Flom because technically he owned the rights to all of that, right? Mm-hmm. He paid us for it to make it, and it was his. And now he was amazingly generous and let us produce it. Um, so that was great. But then it was super discouraging because when we showed this to the people who we had released Magic with before. They had literally said we wouldn't sell more than 100, 150 units, as they told us that. Um, and we were tending to feel discouraged by that because they know the Magic community and they've been that. Um, and lucky for us, that was completely not the case. And it was a smash hit and everybody who owns it loves it, mm-hmm. which is so cool to us because we believed in it from the beginning. We think it's, it's another trick that is literally push button. So if you know it, you know it's literally pushing a button that does this. Yeah. And people just freaked out. It's been one of our huge greatest things that we've done in Magic because so many beginners have done it and, yeah. and it's so cool because um, the way we sell it at conventions is this great. Is my favorite thing. Yeah, we sell it at conventions. We get little kids coming up like, oh, is this easy? What's this? Can I do this? <laughs> Let me borrow your phone. So I borrow the kid's phone. I have to put the airhead behind a deck of cards and I say on the count of three, you're just going to push that button and I'm filming him on his phone and he does it and he doesn't know what happens <laughs> so he doesn't because he's seen the inner workings so he's not totally sure what happened. And then you show him his phone, and he watches the video, this eight-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, <laughs> on his own phone, watching him do this magic trick perfectly and visually. And literally, like, it's like this kid like lighting up with joy on Christmas. Like, like you're literally giving – it's amazing. And, and so and we've done that multiple, multiple, multiple times at conventions. And so it's just one of those that was so cool to bring so much like joy to people through like a silly candy magic trick that yeah. people really related with. Well, I think the visuals are what spoke for that one for sure. Um also, that it's not something again that's super fragile. That's what seems to yeah. be a trend now with you guys. You know, really solid <laughs> stuff, literally. Uh, yeah, we can't. Yeah, we can't do. We've been burned. We're creators and consumers first over everything. Yeah. So we've been burned so many times by gimmicks that break or dry out or this. So we just won't release anything that has those issues. We just, as a company, we just won't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of the way it should be, huh? Yeah, I dig yeah. that. A lot of respect for that. Yeah, hashtag respect. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, also with snaps, uh, as you mentioned, and on the trailer, if you guys want to watch the full trailer, I only got to show part of it. Justin Flom does the thing with the uh, the candies that was part of the Airheads campaign, right? That was like a, yeah. kind of like a viral campaign, right? Yeah, I think cool. a lot of, I mean, like millions of people saw it on. It was a Snapchat advertisement, is what it, the way they used it, I think. So, yeah. so a lot of millions of people saw that whole thing as a commercial for Airheads. Yeah. Oh, and it was on Facebook. Well, oh, Facebook as well, yeah. And the the trend, or the not the trend, but the the theme that kept going under that was, oh, it's a camera trick, it's a camera trick, it's a camera trick. Well, the hell it yeah. is. <laughs> Everyone thought it was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good problem to have, huh? When it's not. Yeah. When it's not, <laughs> really, like no, literally, like a seven year old kid can do it for the yeah. first try without even knowing what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So it is. It's definitely perfect for those younger kids that they're looking to boost up their social media presence or whatever, because it's something you just do and it's gone. Yeah, yeah, we'll actually do a little shout out here. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, well, there's a kids magicians on Instagram is their handle. Yep. It's kids magicians, and they they were one of the first people to pick up Snap and do a video with it, and it's amazing. And they consistently do amazing videos. So go check out kids magicians on Instagram because they're younger kids, a brother and sister duo, I believe, doing like awesome magic. So sweet. Yeah, I love the sound of that. I know also uh, Nick Papa. Uh, he's a young guy from the Ohio area. He did a killer video on Instagram, too. It looked great. Yeah, he Dude. did a killer oh version. He fooled us with our own trick. It took him yeah. a minute to rewatch it. I didn't rewatch it like five times, and then it was crazy. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I definitely remember that one. That was making the rounds, man. Snap. So I don't know if Murphy's <laughs> currently has them in stock. I know we, we sold out. We got more. I don't know if we have them right now, but if not. They're low. I think you just have like 20 left or something. <laughs> yeah, I think we. Yeah, you guys have sold out on it maybe five or six times now yeah. so i think you're yeah you're running low for sure yeah. we actually we personally don't have, have any. supplies so <laughs> i think we're we're yeah we're, we need to make some more of those. yeah again we started this whole thing off thinking we were going to sell 100 units yeah <laughs> you just never know these days but that's the crazy part about the magic community one of them is that you never know what's going to be a hit and what's not you just can't tell yeah. there's no way to judge that yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, speaking of one of your releases that i feel like kind of flew under the radar a little bit because it's not something that you guys and Nick uh, have been kind of known for, which is, you know, hyper visual stuff, uh, was Words Beyond, the book test. I thought that was a great book test. It was super, super practical, super easy. And the price tag, again, super low. Um, Mm -hmm. 
why don't we talk a little bit about the pros with that one? Because I know there's a lot to talk about with it. You guys can maybe summarize some of your, your highlights with Words Beyond, because it is a great book test. I have it, and mm-hmm. it is very, very practical and very easy to do. Yeah, I love Words Beyond because it's it has everything that, like, if you know the mother of all book tests, that's the, the backbone to this. But there's no memorization, which I love. And then there's no, like, weird pumping fishing thing right at the start where it's like, oh, what's the first letter of your word? I don't know. Let me guess it. Right. And everything can be, like, uh, you combine it with another book so you can, like, turn this one book test where it's just one word reveal into a whole stage piece, which Daryl and I, like, that's our go-to trick when we're doing something on stage together. Yeah. And it's, it's got prediction. It's got direct mind reading. And it's... I love that trick so much, and it's super easy. Yeah, because the main thing, the way we did that, the same way we did Bear, we said, the book test, what's missing? Maybe we won't create the best book test, but what's missing that other book tests don't have that we can add to the world of book tests? And the big thing was we wanted a no-force method with like, like a no-direct-force method to a single word and no fishing. And so with with um, Words Beyond, that's what we accomplished. And, um, and I think, yeah, it flew under the radar a little bit because I think – being honest, like most people don't watch the explanation videos all the way through. They'll get the they'll get the item, they'll watch five minutes of it, and they'll be like, oh, I get it. And then they'll post a review on the cafe saying they don't like it or asking questions of stuff. If they had just watched ten more minutes of the video, they would have answered themselves and seen why this is good. Because, because again, I think um, a lot of our stuff is kind of out-of-the-box creativity. It's not like what standard magic just like has existed in the past, I think. Like, oh, this is a good card trick. This is a good visual. This is this. Our stuff's a little more cerebral, a little different – a little outside the box, so a lot of people will look at it and that's not good. But it's like if you really look, we're not putting out not good stuff. We, we're like we're trying. I mean, obviously, some people like more things than others, but we put a lot of thought into every single release, like years at a time, and figuring out. And we perform at lectures and and for at our gigs and everything, just trying to hammer in every little detail that we can to make this work. And so, and all of that gets taught in our explanation. So it's a little bit of a bummer when people make the jump the gun and be like, oh, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, it's just like mother of all book tests. It's the same, mm-hmm. same stuff repackaged. You can't, please, no. you can't please everybody, you know? You can't, yeah. and that's just it. But no. but again, for anybody who buys stuff from us, like we promise we're, we're putting a lot of thought into our magic, like a lot. So so watch those videos, and you'll definitely pick up on some gems for any trick we put out. No. The other cool thing, I'm not going to give away the details of it, but I thought mm-hmm. that one of the really cool things about the uh, book test was that the way that you start to reveal the information was very, very clever. I thought it was super uh, – it, it made sense, I think, is the way I'm going to put it. Um, yeah, the revelation was very smart. When I saw that, I'm like, these guys are too clever. Uh, oh, thank yeah, you, man. Thank you. Was, thank you. Yeah, and, and that's another thing that most book tests don't offer is a – I mean, you can do this close-up or however, like a standard one. Yep. But also, we offered a way to make this presentation huge, right? Because when we perform on stage – we had a prop that's this big and this big, and it's not just to write a huge word on yeah. it. It's actually like the useful with the alphabet and the eye test and all that stuff that makes it like play really big for an audience and have like a visual something them to latch onto. Yeah, and I think what you guys said is definitely important with any release. Is if you're gonna get something, watch the whole thing. You know, even if you just know how the trick is done, that's only half the battle. You don't know how everything is done if you don't want because they yeah. might have presentational tips or things to help. Parts of the trick make sense, like like you're talking yeah. about right now, you know. So yeah, another another thing that we always run into that we can only like beg people to do is 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 sometimes our methods are more they seem more clever than practical. Like oh, that's kind of smart, but it'll never fly. We get that a lot. Like that method will never work, like in the real world. We mm-hmm. get that a lot. But the fact is, it does. So if you go out there and try it, then tell us it doesn't work. Yeah. We haven't heard that from anybody. We won't, we won't yeah. hear people guessing. That, oh, because this method's so, like, that seems obvious once you know the method, people go, oh, um, we need to, uh, not, that we don't even need to try it, it's never gonna work. So, all we can do is implore people to go out and try it and see how cool it is to fool someone with something so obvious. Mm-hmm. And that's just a lot of our tricks that way, so. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different, uh, People out there that are interested in managing all the kids, the older people, people in between, and some people just have like an attention span like that, and it's just <laughs> fine. Yeah. yeah, come on, like put it. Put we it got snaps for those guys. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you got some so wild. Well. That's funny. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention too, it's one of your. I think it's one of your first releases, which I think is also it's good to bring awareness to older things that are good because yeah. just because they're not new doesn't mean they're not good, and that is the smooth prediction. Uh, which is something that I'm personally a fan of. 
Uh, it's been out for a little while now, but tell the guys what that is. If they've, if they've never seen this or heard of it, give them an idea what Smooth Prediction is because it's really, really cool. So Smooth Predictions is a deck of cards that does everything for you. Like there's no sleight of hand. There's no weird stuff. And it doesn't make sense, but because you have this trick deck, you can have somebody think of any card, and that prediction ends up in your pocket. Or my favorite thing is that prediction ends up under their foot. Yeah. Which, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that doesn't really make sense how a trick deck can do that. But w- if you have smooth predictions, you, you know, know how, how it works. Work. And so so basically, yeah, it's a way to have a, um, a free choice of card and then have a prediction matching it revealed anywhere, but it's all self-contained in the deck. So... Um, it, it's really there's just no a great index. There's no, what? I guess yeah, yeah. There's no index. <laughs> yeah, so it's really, it's really solid, and all self-contained, and, and anybody who has it does love it. Again, like I don't think we like got across exactly how u- useful it is, but when we do gigs, that's like the one deck we carry. We can do like three tricks in the same set with it. Like it's fine because like you're predicting all these, and they're written predictions, not like another card is there. Like you have like actual written predictions out mm-hmm. that are, appear in different places and. I, and it's different every time. Like I, I've, I keep referencing the Svengali deck. We just opened a magic shop, so I keep thinking about these basics. <laughs> um, it's not like the Svengali deck where, yeah, every time it's the seven of hearts, seven of hearts, seven of hearts. No, you can choose any card, and it'll be different if you go to the person standing next to the person. You can do the trick again. They'll choose a different card, and it'll still work out. In even though the guy next to him already saw the trick, they'll have no idea how you did it yeah. again. Love it. Speaking of predictions, too, I wanted to, I had these queued up. I wanted to show the guys, too. One of the things I think that people, we're talking about predictions with Bear, you know, you're revealing a prediction in in real time, but uh, a lot of people think, and I'm putting this on the screen now, is the image of the card revelation on the back of someone's hands, the seven of diamonds here. The other cool thing is, people don't realize is, and you guys can expand on this, obviously, is with Bear, you can also reveal just a number, you know, or also, I've got it here, you can reveal shapes as well. So, um, yep. I, I did want to make sure people realize that, that it's not just a way to reveal just one thing. You can reveal pretty much anything you can think of. Oh, yeah, initial well is like super powerful for that. That's basically all that I use Bear for, and I think I can speak for Daryl, too. That's all he does it with, is you walk up to somebody who you've never met, you ask them to tell you the name of somebody whom you've never met and they know you don't know, and after a card trick, those the person that they're thinking of, their initials end up on the back of their hand. Yep. It's, it sounds too good to be true, but the uh, the good news is it's not. It's there. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, some love for you guys. It's always good to throw that in here, too. Uh, Raymond Sing, uh, Singson says, the other brothers' work have never disappointed. Love it. So very, yes. uh, very nice to hear. Thanks, and we appreciate you guys. Cause a lot of people say that, and we, we know you guys mean it, and it yeah. encourage us a lot because – we, with our brand of magic, the way we do things, we get also a lot of the haters. That's like we attract those as well. So, it's always, so we love balancing it out with guys like Raymond here because that's amazing. We get emails all the time and messages of people, and we just like it literally like it keeps us going. So like hit us up always. Let us know if you need help with anything or cool. questions about anything. Like we're always open to talk to you about anything, and people know we always respond to our messages. And, yeah, and we just love cultivating these relationships with other magicians and making basically friends with these people who we get to see all around the world as we travel, you know? And we'll talk about that in just a second because I want to make sure we highlight something once again. Uh, first, I want to make sure Joey Onks gets his comment in here. He says, hello, other brothers from other mothers. There you go. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Uh, I did want to highlight something again. I know we talked about this in the beginning, but uh, you will be one of four uh, main attractions at Magic Live this year in the dealer room. Uh, so, uh, so excited. Very stoked for you guys. So if any of you that are watching are coming out to Las Vegas here this summer, first of all, uh, be prepared for the heat. I want to I want to prep that. It gets very yeah. hot. Yep. Uh, but two, look for them in the dealer room. They're going to have one of the big, what are they calling it? Not a, not a, show, mega booth. a showcase booth. Showcase booth. A showcase booth. Showcase mega booth. I mean, we're like going, It's and it's so exciting because we're locals, we get to build this thing out insane. So we've got like, I mean, you are, you can't miss us. We will be, you know, 15 feet in the air, 30 feet wide. Like it's going to be a ginormous spectacle of lights and yeah. people, and, and we're going to have couches. So come in and coming hang out. out. Like mm-hmm. it is going to be extravagant to say the least. And sounds like so a excited. sounds like a Chris Angel show. That's what it is. 
<laughs> lights and spectacles. Except, except for saying it was all extravagance, no substance. We'll have a little bit of substance. Hopefully. <laughs> Explosions at pyro. <laughs> That's going to be it, man. Uh, Michael Castellino says, I hope I got that right, Castellano. Uh, I just saw you guys live not too long ago, and you guys rock. Love what you uh, guys do. Keep it up. So that's from Michael out there. Let's see that. Oh, thank uh, you, man. Thank you. Where do you see us live at? Uh, we'll have to get that comment in here. Michael, yeah, where'd you see him live? I'm guessing at one of the expo things you might have done, or maybe at a... Uh, we've done a lot. We did, like, yeah, we've done it quite a bit. So it could be one of the expos, or um, could have been at... In England. In England or North Carolina Texas. or Texas. Everywhere. Everywhere. That's right. You guys did tricks. The tri C's convention, didn't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Daniel Ricks also says, uh, I love the other brothers' creativity. I've been using the Russian roulette since they shared it 100% safe, and you may perform it serious, uh, comedic, or both. It's my favorite go-to suspense effect. So there you go. Oh, we, we, we wouldn't mind talking about that one for a second because that – that's on the Murphy's lecture. You get so much value on those. <laughs> so that was on our first Murphy's lecture, and we always try to, for our lectures, when we go do them, either they're live lectures or in-person lectures, we try to include an experimental section where we do a trick that can't be more than two weeks old and we could have never performed it before is the rule, right? Mm-hmm. So funny enough, this uh, it's called uh, White Russian, the acid roulette, which is what he's talking about. Um, was an experimental trick that we talked about in that first lecture, and we said, "Look, we just went, we just went to Walmart and just bought everything for this." But we could have never imagined that became like a cult hit. Like people were coming up to us, and I'm talking like the biggest names in magic that you can imagine. Though, well, at least one of those guys is doing it in his live show. A few other people are doing it on their cruise ship shows, and this is a trick that we put like zero thought into and came up with in a week. And it's just become – it's been developed over the years now, so now it's, like, even better. But so many people are doing it, which is amazing. And it was a complete surprise to us. That's so, cool. again, for 8 bucks at Murphy's right now, you can go buy that and watch it. And it's great. Uh, I will say that's on the first one because I'm going to pop this up. Yeah. They just did one in January of, of this year that's out. This is part two. So if you want to get the roulette – Russian roulette routine they're talking about, excuse me, um, it is on the first – uh, lecture that they did. So make sure you do check the details on the one that you're going to pick up because it's only the first one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> this is a funny comment. I like this. Uh, Richard Benson says, why didn't the Avengers just get the other brothers snapped? Get it? <laughs> Dude, that was our most said comment on YouTube was <laughs> about Thanos. Thanos did nothing like, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It's so good. Um, oh man, we love everybody. This is yeah. so much fun. What's funny too is that when when we had finally released it, that was we had to build that whole thing ourselves, and so we literally did nothing for I don't know two months yeah. except build those. That was before we had gimmick builders and an established company. Yeah, <laughs> and so when the comments are coming through about Thanos and 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 that sort of thing, we were all like. What is? We haven't seen them. We haven't had any time haven't to go see a movie, yet. so we're just like we don't get the reference. <laughs> so we all, so all had to go see the Avengers. We're like, well, that's what everybody's talking about. I get it. <laughs> that's funny, dude. You had no idea. That's great. Uh, Nicholas is sitting over there. I know he just flew in from uh, Japan. I wanted to ask him briefly how was the trip to Japan. I know you were over there lecturing. How did that go, man? Oh, uh, it's amazing. Uh, I love it over there. Uh, mostly the food. Yes. Yeah, well, he got to try food. some weird food. Yeah, I actually ate raw chicken. Oof. So chicken sashimi. Wow. And you're still alive. Which That's good. I suggest nobody do that unless <laughs> you're in Japan. <laughs> okay? Because it's a very, like... Uh, Salmonella is real? <laughs> yes. But it's a, because it's a very particular process. In Japan, it's a, a specially raised chicken. The way that it's served is very special. Um, but I, I'll say this. If you're in Japan... Try chicken sashimi. It's delicious. <laughs> All right. I, I, I need to make it over there myself. Trust me. That's a place I've been wanting to go is, is Japan. Uh, follow up on that, though, actually. Did you try the blowfish? Isn't that like one of the only places in the world? I know they're even limited there that you can yeah. try the blowfish. Did you do it? I didn't try the blowfish. <laughs> okay. Did you have the opportunity to try it? I didn't. But if I did, I, I'm, I'm so adventurous, I would have tried it. Okay. Next time, next year. <laughs> Speaking of Luke's sushi, man, yes. we need to do it. Yeah, yeah, we all have to go get some sushi. I'm in. Let me know when. <laughs> Let's do the damn thing. <laughs> uh, and Nick, I want to ask you, uh, lastly here, I know that you just got back, so you probably want to take a nap. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. 
Do you have any other? Uh, yeah. this, is, this is a dumb question for Nicholas Lawrence, so just I'm going to preface it with that. Do you have any other new things coming out, Nick Lawrence, that we might see? Uh, that's like the dumbest question I've asked all day. <laughs> I'm I'm always working on something, uh, yeah. and I can say just between uh, us and Abstract Effect, we even have some collaborations together that's with right. the other brothers. Uh, but yes, there's plenty of yeah. uh, Nicholas Lawrence uh, and. Uh, collaborations coming very That's soon. what's interesting about this whole thing is now because now that we are all kind of like creating stuff together now, you're going to see a lot of basically just abstract effect releases, which are just Nicholas Lawrence and Daryl and Daryl mm -hmm. doing magic together. And so like even the first one that comes to mind is um, is a you can basically take a deck of cards, change it into a bunch of blank business cards. And then print your business card on the one and hand it out. <laughs> and so it's like, but, and so that ends up being a collaboration of multiple people. And then we're also coming up with a bunch of new tricks that is like, totally. like that are all going to be basic combos, which is going to be something very cool that we're all excited about. Sweet. All right. Well, that's that's what I was hoping to hear. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> I hope that I hope that one day, Nick, that the lighter thing that you show me makes the uh, it sees the light of day. I hope I hope you have a chance to put that. Oh, on. That's the lighter thing, yeah. yeah that's, that's pretty <laughs> Yeah, cool. one, one of many, but that one is definitely one of my current favorites. Yeah. yeah. yeah I dig that. And that's one of the fun things too, guys. If you do come out to Vegas, you know, these guys are around. I know they're busy building stuff, working on stuff, but um, I know that when the last time we hung out was at the weekly gathering that I would love to give a little plug to, you know, over on oh, Vegas. Yeah. Vegas. Tommy Rockers. Uh, is it off Dean Martin? Isn't that where it is? Yeah, sure it is. Yeah, every Wednesday starts about eight, nine o'clock. Goes into the early hours of the morning. I know Alan Ackerman usually pops up. These guys come by sometimes. Um, it's the place to hang out in Vegas. And a lot of people ask, "Where do you go?" That's one of the organized places that's every week. You know. Yeah, I mean it's a little bummer because uh, Gary Darwin, the guy who started yeah. history, just passed away. Um, he, it, I think the club was, I think it was close to fifty years old. I might be. No, that by a little bit. It's either fifty or sixty. Fifty or sixty, and Gary Darwin never missed a meeting until the very end, like year. Um, he he never missed a meeting, he, even if the Wednesday fell on Christmas <laughs> or New Year's. It never mattered. He was always at the club where he said because he wanted this place that every magician in the world. This is what he always talked about. No matter where you come from, you always know for the rest of your life when you come to Vegas, there's always a magic meeting on Wednesday. So you know you'll never not have a place to go if you're a magician on a Wednesday night in Vegas. That was his goal, and he accomplished it, and the goal is to continue that legacy going throughout. So rest in peace, Gary Darwin. Absolutely, and I hope it does continue to uh, to go on. I don't see why it wouldn't, but... Uh, oh, yeah, there's a lot of people have uh, picked up that torch. So, I mean, you know, like, like you're saying, Gary Darwin was amazing, and he was a one man who could do it all, and now we have, like, three guys who are doing it. <laughs> Which is just a testament to how much Gary did. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, no, it's it's still going to be a thing. If you're ever in Vegas and it's Wednesday night, you know you have a home and you're yeah. all everybody's welcome. We yeah, and I remember it being great. I remember one year, honestly, it was like Christmas Eve on a Wednesday, and I was going through some issues and stuff and some different family things, and I went to Magic Club, just me and Gary hanging out, you know. And so it's, it was a That's good cool. place. And I just want to update the guys because uh, some people think that it was Boomers. They moved to Tommy Rockers, and that is the name of the yeah. place. David yeah. it is Tommy Rockers. Uh, they, it's a much better place. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> Boomers got taken over by Rap Night. Yep. So Rap Night and Magic Night. It was like two groups of people that only mesh in Jabrizi. Hey, dude, that must have been a great place to shoot magic trailers, though. I mean, the reactions. <laughs> oh, we did. I wish we would have done that. Oh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> It's like walking into Reaction City right there. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, also, I want to mention this real quick, and then I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Uh, Chris Fleming says, another nice comment for you guys, Bear is one of my favorite effects. I always bring it with me when I'm out to dinner, just in case the opportunity arises. So there you go, a little more love for Bear. Awesome, so, that's amazing. That's great. Right yeah, Bear is awesome because, like you say, you just carry that Sharpie, and when you're out at dinner, you have salt, you have pepper, you have sugar. Like You have so many opportunities mm -hmm. to just like make magic happen where your spectators think, like, he did magic with freaking nothing. Like we were just at the table, and he made a miracle happen. Yep. They don't know you got your special sharpie. Oh, no. <laughs> Magicians and sharpies. That should be. That, that's a thing. <laughs> that's for sure. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Do you do you want us to talk about? Well, I guess do the people want us to talk about our next? I was movie? definitely going to hope you were going to mention that because this is something. And I'm assuming Murphy's is going to be stocking this one for the magic shop. Yeah, show. yeah. definitely. Sweet. So this will be the next abstract effects release. Okay. Uh, this is an other brother's creation. Okay. Um, and we are. Excited for this for more than a few reasons. So it's called Midnight Breakfast. Okay. 
uh, which the title didn't come to later, which we'll, t- we'll get into. But but basically what we wanted to create was a bill effect using a unique method that would accomplish all of the greatest, what we consider moments in magic. Like, And now, this was the goal, right? So we might not have hit all this, but we'll tell you uh, they hit with a simple bill trick. They would hit all the great moments in magic and build magic. Okay. That was kind of the goal. And then we start off like restore trades position. Right. So the way this works is amazing. Two people sign bills. One person signs a bill and holds it in their hand. The other person signs a bill and you rip the corner off. You then visually restore their bill. So you've got torn restores. Always an audience pleaser, right? Yep. Boom. Examinable. Give it out to them. They check it out. And then the person over here holding their bill lifts up their hand and give me one second. I think we got a little. Thing. So um, then the person over here who had the bill that wasn't torn lifts up their hand, and now the corner of their bill is missing, <laughs> and this, which gets which literally gets the best reaction because magic in the spectator's hands, as we know, is one of the great moments of magic. They lift up their hand, they lose their mind, and then that piece can appear anywhere, legitimately anywhere. It could appear in your pocket. It could appear in a locked safe. It can appear buried under the dirt. Like. Buried under the dirt. It does not matter, and it's a piece that they can then match up with no switches. So with this one gimmick that you get that, again, will seem simple, so people will see and be like, oh, that's all it is. But when you see everything that it does, it allows you to do a torn and restore. It allows you to do an appearance in the magic of their hands, and it allows an impossible location, all with this one gimmick with bills. So, And the name again is? Midnight Breakfast. Midnight Breakfast. Oh, yeah. Why is it called Midnight Breakfast? So the reason it's <laughs> Thanks, Midnight Joe. Breakfast, because um, somebody pointed out to us that using our gimmick, you can then recreate every single out to lunch effect ever created. Oh wow! All so right. it's not the same in any way as the out to lunch gimmick. It's very different mm-hmm. because um, again, there's no cutting, no no cover. It's a totally different yeah, no thing. No half bills, no rubber bands, no clips, nothing. Nothing weird. Um, yeah, there's no clip, anything like that. So it doesn't. You would never recognize it as that. But somebody said, "Look, you could do all this stuff." And we're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Yes, you can. Oh, my gosh. And so we got so excited about that. So we went from a a one-trick pony, well, a three-trick pony, I guess, not routine, to then having literally thousands of effects that you could do with this. Um, So many books published on just out to lunch. Lunch, Yeah, which you literally directly apply to this gimmick. And that's when the name uh, Midnight Breakfast came up because uh, out here in Vegas, we do after midnight, all the casinos have steak and eggs for, like, literally $2.99. And so you'll have Midnight Breakfast a lot. So they're already out to lunch, out to dinner. What's the next meal in Vegas? Midnight breakfast. Dig it. I love all of it. Yeah, that's that sounds really good. Do we have any idea on how soon people might be able to see this? I know you have so a trailer. The trailer will be edited and done by tomorrow morning. Oh. And then um, we'll send that off to you guys. And then we'll have another about two, three weeks of production. So hopefully people can expect to see it within a month's time. Oh, nice. Beginning of June, hopefully. Beginning of June. All right. Sounds good. Um, If you guys want a little bit of teasers along the way, um, go follow Abstract Effects on Instagram. Yep. And we'll be posting little teasers and bits there. And, and again, this is our one plug for Abstract Effects. Go on the website. Put your email in. We're giving away free tricks. If you sign up for our email list, we're doing crazy contests, and we don't have that many – Followers yet, so a lot of people are winning. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Like, I know, there's only 300 of you, so if we give away five things, that's like, I don't know, that's like <laughs> a lot of people. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's unlike coming to Vegas. You actually have good odds with us. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm very stoked for that. I had no idea. You mentioned that before this. You're like, yeah, we want to talk about this. I'm like, what is that? I I didn't even know. So thanks yeah, so for we'll sharing. We'll send you a trailer tomorrow then. Sweet. And, that, and again, that's why I love my job. I get to see all this stuff before it hits the market. So, yeah, yeah. excited to, to see that. Yeah, then it will be out to market soon. So everybody watching, like, cool. I mean, either get a job with Murphy so you can see it early or <laughs> just wait a couple more weeks. It's yeah. up to you. <laughs> uh, one last thing I want to ask from all of you guys as we go down the row. Uh, if people want to keep up with you, if they haven't already, if they want to find you, see you, where are the best places, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, you know, just going to give you guys a chance to plug that along the way because I know you're each putting up different things as well. So, uh, yeah, how can people keep up with each one of you guys? Yeah, so um, so I guess the main way to get all of us is abstract underscore effects on Instagram. We answer those messages all the time, regularly. We follow everybody back. We That's our main connection for all of us as a group. Then there's Nicholas Lord's Magic on Instagram. Yep. Um, we got other brothers magic on Instagram, and then and then you can also email us if you still email, um, and we're <laughs> magic at abstracteffects.com. 
we'll always respond to your messages, whether it's through Facebook, Instagram, email. Um, but I'm always on top of the emails because I get to be the boring one. So magicfasttrackfx.com is where you find me. Otherwise, my personal Instagram is just a bunch of food pictures. So <laughs> no one wants that. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then we're working on the Facebook. Actually, we'll probably do that today because we actually don't have a dedicated Facebook for it yet. So okay. uh, maybe we'll just link it in the comment section after this. What, what is this email you speak of, Max? What is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we also take fax and you can page yeah. me. <laughs> you can page <laughs> Max. <laughs> email is like a DM where you have to have your own specific app just for getting DMs. <laughs> yeah, it's like an EM. That's funny. All right, guys. I am going to wrap this up. Unless you had any last things you wanted to say, you gave us some uh, a little sneak peek there of something coming up. So it's a nice little bonus. I want to say thank you to everybody typing in, sending questions, and talking to us, and yeah, loving us. And we, love you. Guys. we love you yeah, guys. Luke, we love you. We're going to get sushi soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for you and Murphy's taking the time to even talk to us and for these people interested in even hearing from us. So we appreciate every single one of you guys. Uh, of course, man. We're here for you guys, and uh, we'll have to do this again. And we'll get us all together. If you guys don't know, uh, I'm probably like five minutes from where they are right now. So we'll have to find a way to <laughs> actually do all this in person. Too. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. We'll have a great afternoon, and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. See you, guys. See you. All right, my friends, there you go, a chat with uh, the other brothers. I had no idea Nicholas Lawrence was back. I know he's been in Japan, so thank you to Nick for sitting there and making it through. Go take a nap. Go get some rest, man. I know you're exhausted. Thank you for that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And also to all of you guys out there, um, if you have any other questions, you can always post them in the comment section below. I know that uh, Facebook's changing up their algorithms, so I don't know if I was able to get out in all the different magic groups out there. So if you are a member of any of those, feel free to post this in those. I'm having trouble on the app figuring out how to do that. They keep changing their stuff. So if you have a better way to do it, let me know too. So we're trying to spread the word about this. And don't forget, we are here every week. We'll be back next week with uh, Jean Miranda talking about his brand new release. So if you want to join us for that, uh, I'll have the link up and you can actually get the reminder for that. And it sounds like the computer on their end just died. So that was good timing. I just got a message saying that their computer died. So, all right, that worked out pretty good, I'd say. It's like I knew that or something. All right. So uh, anyway, thanks, guys, uh, for hanging out. We'll be back again next week. Same place, uh, New Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and don't forget, turn on your notifications. If you're watching this on your app, you can turn on live notifications. So when we do go live, it'll pop up. It'll let you know. And on our page, uh, you can go to the top of the page and click on follow. Make sure you're following us. So you can actually check if you want to to have us pop up at the top of your feed. If you want to see the latest magic tricks popping up, that's how you can do that. It's very easy and definitely helps you out. Uh, when it comes to all this new stuff that's uh, being released. So you got it. All right. So thank you guys. Thank you again to Nicholas Lawrence, to the other brothers, and of course to Max. He's part of the other brothers too, but thanks to Max too for joining us. So yes. All right, my friends, have a great rest of your day and week, and we will catch you next time right here. Same place, same time. All right. We'll see you there. All right, my friends, have a great day.